Let's talk about descriptive statistics. It is the branch of statistics that is in charge of collecting, organizing, and summarizing data. We also have inferential statistics, which is when you're going to draw conclusions, general conclusions. We have some vocabulary that we have to go through first in statistics. We're going to start with population. Population is the largest collection of entities for which we have an interest at a particular time. Population is everything that we are interested in. So let's say that we have a high school like Jackson Senior High School, and there are 2,500 students that attend Jackson Senior High School. So the population in this case is going to be all 2,500 students who attend Jackson Senior High School. Now we're going to also talk about another word called the sample. The sample is just a subset of the population. So if my population is all 2,500 students who attend Jackson Senior High School, my sample could be 50 10th graders who attend Jackson Senior High School. Or it could be the students who are in a robotics club at Jackson Senior High School. So the sample is a subset of the population. When you have to give an example of population, it's very important that you encompass that idea of all. Okay, so all students, um, every student. Sometimes they do give you an exact amount, like 2,500 students. It's really important that when you are talking about examples for population and sample, it's nice for you to tie them together. And it's very important for you to encompass this idea of all or every. So if we're talking about the patients who visit a particular hospital, then every single patient who attends that hospital will be my population. But my sample could be every fifth patient that comes in through the emergency door at that particular hospital. So once we have described population and sample, now we're gonna talk about types of data. Numerical data is quantitative data that has a numerical value associated with it like height or weight, SAT scores, the number of siblings that you have in your family. Categorical data is qualitative data, and it's divided into categories. Hair color, the type of vehicles that are parked outside of your driveway, the type of transportation that people take to go to work, nationality, favorite football team. All of those are going to be examples of qualitative data. If data is quantitative, then we can break it down even more into discrete and continuous. The idea of discrete is that it is distinct and separate. Think of the number of desks that are in a classroom. Each desk is distinct and separate. Also think about the number of cruise ships that leave from the Port of Miami. Let's talk about the number of airports in Washington State. Those are all examples of discrete data because they are distinct and separate. And most of the time you might be thinking, okay, if it's a whole number, it's going to be discrete data. But there are other examples that are not necessarily just going to be whole numbers. One of those will be shoe sizes. Shoe sizes in the United States, they range by half sizes. So if you are a female and your shoe size is size seven, you go to the store and you try on a size seven and it fits you too tight then you'll have to go to a seven and a half. If the seven and a half fits you to lose, well, basically there's no seven and one quarter. There's no 7.333, there's no 7.25, okay? So in that case, you're definitely going to have to make a choice, either seven or seven and a half. So that's another example of discrete data because each one is distinct and separate. Continuous data can include any real numbers between a minimum and maximum value. Examples of continuous data is height, weight, time. Think about the Olympics. How many times do those gold medals come down to fractions of a second? Mass in grams or kilograms, the amount of sugar that's in an orange, the amount of nicotine that's in a cigarette, all of those are examples of continuous data the amount of rainfall in a particular city, etc. One general way to tell if data is continuous is to ask yourself if it is possible for the data to take on values that are fractions and decimals. If your answer is yes, this is usually continuous data. So the length of time it takes for a light bulb to burn out. Take a look at exercise number one. The directions are to classify each set of data as discrete or continuous. 
one through six, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can get those correct on your own, and then press play. Question number one, the number of suitcases lost by an airline. Suitcases are distinct and separate. You can't break down a suitcase into any decimal. Therefore, that example is going to be discrete. Number two, the height of corn plants. You can keep breaking down height. It is a measurement that can be broken down further and further. So that is going to be continuous. Number three, the number of ears of corn produced. This is an example of discrete data because each ear of corn is distinct and separate. Number four, the number of green M&Ms in a bag. If you open up a bag and you start counting one green M&M, two green M&Ms, three, that's going to be, again, distinct and separate. You're not going to start dividing them into any possible decimal. Number five, the time it takes for a car battery to die, time is continuous. You can break it down into hours, minutes, seconds. So time is an example of continuous data. And lastly, number six, the production of tomatoes by weight. That is also going to be continuous data because you can keep breaking it down further. So hopefully you got all of these correct.